you ow good way to start a video hello everyone Princess here and welcome back to Siberia uh, it's been a while because I can't schedule my life at all also it's really funny oh my elbow that every time I try I pick a day to record they're doing construction or beginning to do stuff so I'll find that really funny because yesterday I did nothing like I didn't record or anything nobody showed up and then today I'm like I want to do stuff they're doing stuff um, anyways, we gotta do this. I think I was on the right track last time. Yeah, I was. I was just doing the right thing. I thought it was on my right thing, but I was stupid. How are you guys doing? I'm doing okay. Okay, there's that. So I've lowered the water and now I have to tell them that they can go there. Excuse me. Oh my god, I'm so hiccupy. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? Hello. Right, I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. What for do? Das ist eine echte ladies. Alle toi, range alle dingen, and obligados de dame. Ach, set content on the route again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up! We hurry to travel again! Okay, okay! We'll meet each other on the other side! By my train, okay? So we're on the other side now. So tell me, where is this hook? That I need. <gasps> See, so much in this game blends in that I don't know what's an actual item or not. There, I have a hook now. Okay. I don't know what's an actual item or if it's just like, oh yes, look at this weird pixel. Like, thank you, I don't need to see this weird pixel, but okay. There we go, I moved my microphone, it probably looks super stupid. I put it on my laptop, we're okay now. I don't use I don't need to use my keyboard for anything, so I might as well just um put it like on my thing. 
There we go. Sorry, there's so much readjusting that has to happen. I'm on a, I have my own desk, but it's like... Wait, where the fuck are they? Oh, I have to go back. I'm in the wrong spot. Of course I am. Revive? What did I be? Come on. Come on, Kate, put in your gear. Let's go. Let's go, Ty. I'm gonna be lazy. I'm gonna go through the train. This way. It's really the easiest thing ever. Yes. Can I go this way? No, I cannot. Okay. Oh, so I was supposed to. Excuse you. I am just really bad at directions here. Okay, we're on the right track now. Hello, Station Master. How are you doing? Thank you for the wine, by the way. I will thoroughly enjoy it at some point or another. Uh, this way. Go. Go. Kate, go faster. I want to get out of the station. Hey! I don't know how to okay, how do we raise the water level? Um, two, four. Shoot. Um, one, two, one, two. How do you raise the water level? Okay. Two, seven, six, six. Six, seven, four, two. Okay, shut up. Two, seven, six, 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 seven, four, two. Two, seven, six, six. Darn it! Did I put in the wrong number? I know the loss is 4 2, 6 7. <laughs> Darn it! Am I playing the wrong number again? Am I just this stupid? I'm not good at remembering numbers. Some, yeah, I am an idiot. Okay. See, that's my problem. I can't. I'm really bad at remembering numbers, so I can't remember phone numbers or anything. Okay, two seven six 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 seven four two. Two seven six 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 seven four two. Is this the right one? Welcome to the East Block Control Center. To start, press the number sign. If you are using the Haltenberg Lock, press 1. If you are using the Morloff Lock, press 2. If you are using the Conning Pass Lock, press 3. If you are using the Barrackstadt Lock, press 4. To return to the last command, press the number sign. I'm in barracks shop. Thank you. If you want to raise the water level, press 1. Oh, I'm stupid. If you want to lower the water level, press 2. To return to the last command, press the number sign. Yeah, we're just gonna end this phone call, actually. Thanks. But I'm stupid. It's 1 and 2, and I'm over here thinking it's complicated, but it's not. Yeah. I'm overthinking everything as I usually do. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a complicated number combination. Nope, it's just four for Barracha and one or two for raising or lowering the water level. Because I'm an idiot, apparently. What's new? Alright, get going, you boat. That's my question. Alright, we're 
good. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. No. Run back. Go over the little bridge. And then... Paleontology guy hasn't called me yet. About his lecture. He's like, buddy, I'm getting ready to leave. point. There. Your barge is over the locks now. It's up to you to keep your part of the bargain. Yes, Berodstrau. Attach lock for lock. <coughs> My husband say, return to train, attach chain, then barge will pull. Okay. I'll get moving. That's all I need. No. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Dos Vidania. on other side you still need us yes help me what do we do now to tie my train to the barge Mademoiselle tuck -a -tuck. Lo -co 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 chain. Lo -co -co -co. what did your husband say you attach chain to train and chain to train with barge oh catch it sir. okay I was like where the fuck is the chain like took you long enough buddy Thank you. So difficult. To throw that. Apparently. Okay, let's get going. We gotta wind up the train. Wind it up. Wind it up. Ba -da -ba -da. Wind it up. Who the fuck is calling me? Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is oh Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the U calls at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Thank you, Professor, for calling me right when I get to my fucking train. I really appreciate how well-timed your phone call was. Now, if you will excuse me, train and Oscar, I must go sit in on a mammoth uh, lecture. Because fuck my life. Even though mammoths are really cool, and I love learning about prehistoric times and mammoths. I personally love history. I personally love learning stuff. School has just ruined it for me. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. That's my thing. Even like, 
If I wasn't in school, I'd be teaching myself right now. But that doesn't say anything to anyone because I don't have a piece of paper saying I was I learned stuff. And that's my problem. So I would love to learn about history on my own. I would love to learn how to be an engineer. Not really, I don't have the patience for that. I would love to learn in-depth psychology. Do I have time to do that? No. Am I in a psychology class? Yes. Is it teaching me any of that? No. Because it's basic psychology that I took in high school that didn't count towards anything, even though it was a college class. I love the broken school system. Like, none of my- I'm pretty sure none of my credits- college classes from high school transferred over to college, so I'm like, great, I spent three years at a community college for no good reason. Almost three years. It'll be three years next. Well, it would be three years in the fall, but it's technically two and a half. Still, two and a half years of community college, not really anything to brag about. Considering I had to drop out of a lot of classes. Why am I telling you all this? Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. Shut up, Pawns. What's your name? Pawns, anyway, huh? 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 Let me sit behind the projector. I'm that person. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. But curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yuko forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukol's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yukol people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukols learned 
how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukol Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value, mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice art is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukols were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation the people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukol's traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yukol population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live, or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. I appreciate the two guys that yawned during this lecture because I was like, me too. <sighs> Buddy. Jesus Christ. I hate lectures so much. Oh, that one guy's still asleep, me too. It'd be so funny if it's like, ah, oh, mammoths aren't ex in existence. Plot twist, mammoths still exist. I think that'd be dope. Like, I think, I, I personally, like, okay, here's, we're gonna get all, like, sciency for, like, a couple seconds here. And by a couple seconds, I mean a couple minutes. Um, the fact that there are a lot of species that have evolved from prehistoric times that had survived, such as, like, I think, um, the crocodile, um, and other, like, reptiles especially, that have survived and adapted to current times. If that's a possibility, I can, in Siberia, like, in the parts of Russia where, like,
Okay, I'm like, I'll read this in a second, but, um... To think in, like, cold, like, just abandoned parts of the world where it's, like, just such extreme climates that no one can, no human can possibly live there. I wholeheartedly believe that there are animals from way, like, centuries ago that are still in existence there because they're, it's their environment and it's their no people to us. That's the humans are the reason things go extinct. Like, we lost the fucking rhino, what was it, I can't remember, the black rhino, I think, because of poachers, human beings killing them for their horns, like, that was on us. That was 100% on us. That was not for money in the animal, because they know not to fuck with rhinos, but we're idiots, and we fucked with rhinos, and now rhinos don't exist anymore, because we fucked up. Like, we are the reason things die. <laughs> That's the why that's why this planet is dying, because we are the reason for it. We are the reason for animals going extinct, usually. Unless they're the dodo bird. Then that bird's just stupid and killed itself, basically. But we more or less are the reason that things go extinct. So if there's a species living in extreme climate, like extreme conditions. Because like this thing, okay, so like in the ocean, like around volcanoes where it's extremely hot, there are animals living around there. There even some sharks will like like a hammerhead shark can like live around a volcano which is like hot as fuck. That's my measurement here, hot as fuck. They can live there. So what does that tell us? That that tells us animals can adapt. And with the ever changing climate and there's still areas unexplored because human beings cannot physically handle the conditions, but that is humans. Animals can a lot of different animals have different body structures and like biological makeup which means they can survive different types of conditions so example extreme cold we can't handle it regardless of how many layers we wear because then any exposed skin is just done for but then you could have animals like i mean we can handle where polar bears live and it's getting warmer anyway Ugh, i don't want to lose the polar bears but like we can handle it but they are equipped to deal with the freezing cold um, Greenland sharks live up to be, what, like a thousand years old or something? And they live in freezing cold conditions, and they're blind, super slow moving, like, don't eat a lot. Like, they've adapted to harsh conditions. So what's there to say that there isn't an animal from centuries ago living in a place where there are no human beings that are thriving, and we just don't know because we physically cannot go there and prove or disprove that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna read this now. The Legend of the Ivory Ark. The last ice age ended when the planet warmed up. This sudden climate change threatened the existence of many animal species, including mammoths inhabiting the far northern Siberian wastes. It is said that the Yukul peoples decided to follow Noah's example and build an enormous ark to try and preserve the mammoth's existence. They lived in symbiosis with the Derm, which was at the heart of their religious worship. The ship was constructed entirely from mammoth tusks. A small herd of mammoths was installed on board with enormous qualities of fodder. Control of the ship was entrusted to a handful of particularly intrepid yokel clans. Their mission was to take the animals to other lands as pastures more ben befitting to their survival. One day, 50 summers later, as legend would have it, the ark returned to its starting point. The yokels were astonished to find nobody aboard apart from the carcasses of several mammoths perfectly preserved in the ice encasing the ship. The clansmen believed this was a mystery sign from the gods and they ate the mammoths in a memorable feast. One week later, later the ark set sail once more carried away by the currents. Again it returned half a century later with not a soul on board except more well-preserved frozen mammoth carcasses. This mystery continued for a millennia each time the surprisingly well-preserved mammoths appeared out of nowhere. The yokels interpreted the phenomenon as a beloved offering from their dead companions who were believed to have perished on the Ark's first voyage in some horrendous maritime cataclysm. It was believed that their souls had found eternal rest on a mythical island that the shaman named Siberia. They constructed a whole religion around this belief with rites and customs punctuated by the periodic appearances of the phantom ship and its precious cargo. For centuries, nothing changed the Ark's mysterious cycle, only the size of the mammoths changed, reducing imperceptibly over time. That is not even the word, but I'm going with it. Until one day, a hundred year, hundred or so years ago, the Ark returned earlier than expected. It was empty. The yokels were dumbfounded and utterly confused. The spirits of their ancestors had forsaken them. Everything they had believed in that had been the bedrock of their culture since the very depths of time had now lost all meaning. The most fanatical believers 
noted that the frequency of appearances had in fact increased and maintained that there was still hope as long as the art continued its return journeys from the unknown. Some elder yokels boasted having seen it several times, but thenceforth, <laughs> each time the white ship returned, it only offered an empty shell to the despairing eyes of the surviving yokels. The belief became superstition, and the reality became legend. Okay, cool. I have my doll now. I don't want to talk to you about the lecture, because I can't. <laughs> But that's my thing. Like, people, and here's the thing people are discovering new species of animals, bacteria, like parasites every day. Like, as, like, was it last year they discovered a new species of frog? And the reason they hadn't discovered it is because it lives underground a majority of its life. It only comes up above ground to breed. And, um, oh, I can't remember her name. There's an Indian, uh, scientist, researcher who, um, had discovered this little guy. Like, he was just, just chilling up top, and he looks so fat. Like, I remember he's like, this little thing be so round. Like, and that's the thing, like, he lives underground. Like, his, his little species lives underground. Like, how are you supposed to know about it if it's underground? And then, you know, obviously it only comes up for breeding. Because then it's like, when is the breeding cycle? How long does it last? Is it... Like, there's so many questions with it. And then they discovered a couple years ago, I can't remember its actual name, but its nickname is the googly-eyed squid. Like, it's this little... Well, it's like an octopus. Not a squid, it's an octopus. But it's this little octopus that looks like, you know, your regular octopus, like, little round head and little tentacles. But it has these big eyes that it looks like a toy. Like, it just has big huge eyes just on the front of its face and when they discovered it, they were like is that real like like i watched the video footage of them of the scientists finding it with the underwater camera and they were all just like he looks so silly like what is it and they were just like couldn't figure out it was real or not turns out it's a new species of octopus that they didn't they never discovered and that was like 2016 2017 like that's recent guys and that's the thing, it's recent. So when people are just like, eh, and this thing can't be real, like, meh, meh, meh. It's like, how do you know? How do you know? Like, uh, and that squid's like, that big? Like, normal squid size? I don't know what normal squid size is. They can, or octopus, they can get pretty big. <laughs> like, yes, I think this is how big. Like, that's how big it was. That's, that's not something compared to like a little dinky frog that's like this big like those are still things that you can you can see like clearly they're not like a microscopic thing like these are pretty decently sized things like you can hold in your hand so when people are just immediately dismissive of like oh a species this big can't exist because then we would have seen it by now like would we have would we be seeing it already would we know because we're still trying to like because there's so many parts of the world that are unexplored. Plus, even if you explore one part, if there is a species living there, it could be hiding. It could be like, there are so many things that could be happening that you don't know. And, like, I just have such a strong belief that some of these species that people are like, oh, they couldn't be real. Meh, 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 because who the fuck's calling me in the middle of my TED talk? Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm in Bauerkstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. 
We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes? Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on the subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it. Call me back when you calm down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Who? Who? Cold. Cold. I already don't- like, I've never liked Dan. I'm gonna be honest, like, Dan just seems so possessive of Kate, and it's like, when are you coming home? And it's like, it was only supposed to be a few days. Think of- think about me! Oh, I'm sorry that your girlfriend is making good money, she's traveling. She's extremely dedicated to her job. Um... As soon as she pays her own bills, because she's strong and independent, she don't need your dick. Kate's good. She good. She good, boo-boo. God, I hate... Think about me. No. <laughs> no. How about I don't think of... Actually, am I supposed to be on the other side of that? Probably. Oh, I should probably... I need to drive up. I'm stupid. Think about me, Kate. You can be so selfish. I'm sorry, who's the man demanding I return after, like, a day? And telling me that he's being a baby and having a problem? God, I hate Dan so much. Hey, we're done. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Cool. That's it, Oscar. We can go. Kate Walker, I must remind you of one of the journey regulations. All objects featured in the train's inventory must be replaced before departure. Okay. I don't okay. understand. Yeah. Something is missing, Kate Walker. Yep. yep. Oh my god! The mammoth doll! Please return it to its allocated position, Kate Walker. I'm aware, Oscar. I'm okay. off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I feel bad for Kate now. It's like, how can... Like, why... Like, I'm sorry you have to be with Dan. Because he's such a dick. Like, I hate Dan. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Okay, well, the mammoth also. Oscar, there. if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. <laughs> Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay... I swear to God, Asuka, you tell me one more damn thing's missing, I'm gonna rip your legs off the way I put them back on. Actually, I didn't even put your legs back on, you put your own legs on, so that doesn't even work out. Is that door gonna open? I mean, the gate? It's not a door, it's a gate. It's a wall. This is Trump's wall. I'm just kidding, it's not. Yeah, we moved like a hundred feet. Um, can I go this is this the right way? Nope, that is the way I did not want to go. Nope, can't go back on. I want to go the other side. Oscar, Oscar, Jesus Christ. It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations. 
Congratulations, Kate Walker. Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. So you. Oscar, don't you think we've wasted enough time already? You neglected to find the clockwork winding mechanism for the train with sufficient haste, Kate I Walker. I did find it, Oscar. What Shana. nerve! And you refused to lend a helping hand. Help that could have been invaluable to me. I agree, Kate Walker. If you weren't so obsessed by procedure, we wouldn't have had a hitch. I am not entirely convinced, Kate Walker. Oscar, please, let's get in the train and leave, can we? Yes, Kate Walker. Give me the visa. Oh my god. I love that she's like, oh, let me fight with Dan because he's being selfish. Oscar, you absolute piece of garbage. You didn't even help me. Okay, see you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. Like, I literally ran around, had to talk to a weird German couple, like, I had to deal with so much, and you just stayed in the fucking train. Like, no, Oscar, you are irrelevant to this now, entirely. You don't get to say anything, you don't get to give me shit for busting my balls for you, okay? Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> Oh, this isn't sketchy at all. It's cool, but sketchy. Oh my god, who's calling me? I swear to Christ. Hello? Kate! Oh, is that you? What's going on? Hi. Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it, it's huge! I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's do and he said you'd argue. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down in the dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down in the dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead and his eyes mist up and his eyebrows kind of creased together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. It's just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. Now, oh, fuck Dan. Fuck Dan. Also... I know this chick. What's her name? What's her name? Olivia. 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 I know a few Olivias. Um, I know Olivia. Okay, here's here's what here's my assumption. Olivia is all like. She the best friend, but here's the thing: when your best friend is gone and her man is looking all sad and shit, like I, I'm suspicious. I'm mildly suspicious. Which sounds awful, but I'm mildly suspicious. Which I shouldn't be, but I am. Hi, you're an actual human being. Hello. Good day to you, sir. Jesus Christ, can you turn any slower? Captain oh, Melatesta, Commander in Chief of the Barikstadt Border Post, at your service, madam. Kate. My name is Kate Walker. I've been assigned by my company to find a man who is supposed to be living in Siberia. What a peculiar mission. Taking so many risks for such a futile goal. Captain, to my mind, the military zeal with which you insist on guarding this meaningless wall strikes me as equally futile. 
I should be offended by your words, miss, but I forgive you, because you are young and unaware of the very real dangers lurking in store for us. I love that everyone's like, oh, Kate, you're so young, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure she's like 30. Like, 30-something. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's far too dangerous, in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. All right, humor me. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, madam. My respects. I mean, I should probably ask him about Hans, but am I going to? No. Alright, let's see this enemy he's talking about. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. There's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. That doesn't even look... Even when you blur it, it doesn't even look like a horse. Like, it genuinely doesn't. Oh, can I? Oh my god, this enhances vision. Hang on. Look! Broken glasses. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. We're gonna give him some boost here. Beautiful. Colonel, sir. Captain, miss. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I am afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together in the name of friendship. Pleasure, miss, but the regulation strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody need know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, perhaps just a drop. Like, what are we trying to do? Give him wine or seduce him? Like, what are we doing here? Because that was a very uncomfortable conversation. A flattery. Here's your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, yes. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've drunk wine such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barakstadt. It is made from the Amazon forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. The university authorities kept that one to themselves. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please, don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. I literally adjusted a telescope for you so you need to shut up, and I gave you drugs, so. Also, is he in this tower, like, all the time? <laughs> what? In 
incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree? Nothing but a dead tree! Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Wow, okay. Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties, like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. That's only mildly mean and just like, ah, he's basically having existential crisis. Like, it sounds like he's having an existential crisis and he's gonna, like, off himself, but he's just like... Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. <sighs> Miss, if we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? You have my promise, Captain. I won't tell anyone. Hey, that old guard tower guy, he's blind as a bat and stupid. Just kidding. Later. I hope you enjoyed the wine as much as I did, good sir. I wish I had some wine. I swear to god, if I get another phone call before I fucking do, I'm gonna lose my shit. Because I am wholeheartedly tired of phone calls. Mostly because the phone calls are all like people getting mad at me and I'm like, stop. Regulation. Here is your ticket. Hmm. 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 Yes, it's regulation. Thank you, Oscar. It's not like I... Departing from Paris. Have a good journey, Kate Walker. So, can we go now? Indeed. We are already very late, Kate Walker. <sighs> Where? How? Late to what? I'm literally the only passenger. I am A, the only passenger. B, I have no set destination. Stupid trade ticket, Oscar, before I shove it up your metal ass. Here you go, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar. Yes, yes. Let's go, Oscar. Let's kick this baby into gear. Thank you. 
I'm going to stop this episode right here. I don't know where we are, but we're going to explore this place in the next video. Because that was a lot that happened. That was a lot. Um, fuck Dan. Fuck Dan. Fuck Dan. I just want to make that clear. I hate Dan. I hate him so much. <gasps> hate the entitlement. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to video, remember to hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever I make. Bye.